Hey there, welcome to part two of our trip to Seoul. On this episode, we wanted to do something a little bit more casual, so the Raffinator and I are actually gonna watch the episode and make some commentary on it. All right, so this guy that you see walking the streets here is Sang, and we actually met him on our first trip to Japan. He actually lives in Seoul, so in this episode, he shows us around. Yeah, so he took us to a bunch of street markets, and uh, eventually he took Raphael shopping for souvenirs for his family. Which I didn't get because I got distracted by this interesting um, ancient relic. Explain what's happening to the people. They're trying to shop. I'm, this is a, oh. Looks like a, what is a dildo? Uh, I'm trying to shop for a dildo. Yeah. Ancient dildo. It's uh, $15. $15, $15, $15 that's pretty good. Just spend a penis. Yeah. $15 for a good time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. It's a good investment. Yeah, so right here I got really excited because we were walking into this business and I noticed that they were protesting. I'm like, look, they're protesting, they're protesting. And you know, nobody thought it was a big deal. But actually in Korea, they're really politically active. And a lot of it was anti-Trump, which confused me because I'm like, I seen this back in LA, but I didn't know they were doing anti-Trump protests in Korea as well. We would see a lot of um, police out there. And what we learned was that apparently you have to either do military service or police service. And then, so it's like a mixture. So these, they have so many people serving in the police department that they just have them standing around everywhere. But I guess that's fine because since there's a lot of protests going on every day, you might as well put them out there, you know, just as a show of force, even though they look like they're still in high school sometimes. After we finished with all the protest stuff, we made it to Seoul Tower. And the ride getting there was a lot longer than we expected. Oh man, that was a heavy ride. You had to find a taxi, but you had to go to a specific taxi pickup spot. You couldn't yeah. just wave a taxi down. We ended up going to a hotel and pretending like we were guests or something. Yeah. And then catching a taxi there. And then we took a taxi and we took it to a bus stop and that thing was yeah. packed and you had to because wait. Because you can't take taxis up this route to Seoul Tower. You have to take a shuttle or walk. And we ended up getting dropped off at the shuttle stop and it was like a 30 minute line. Yeah, but it was romantic. Oh, this is my favorite part. I saw that bar of soap. I was in there before Armando and I instantly thought, oh, he's gonna be all over this because he has to wash his hands every time, every moment. And I just pictured him just, you know, this working that one of the bar times soap. when I didn't wash my hands. I'm very big on washing your hands before you eat, but this time I was like, okay, uh, I think I'll just eat with a fork and knife or chopsticks. It pisses me off. Well, that I have to wash my hands before I eat? Yeah. So this bar of soap gives a whole new meaning to, you know, washing your mouth with soap. this point, it was Halloween night, and I guess they don't really do trick-or-treating or anything like that in Korea. So this neighborhood is called Itaewon, and it's basically the bourbon street of Seoul. We were here last night, but it was nothing like this. But it was just like most like weekend nights. Oh. Not that many people dressed up for Halloween there. Yeah, from what I noticed, it's mostly um, like the Westerners do it. And then randomly scattered throughout the event, you'd see some people in Halloween outfits, but it was still cool. We went to this little restaurant called Tap Public. I wish I had recorded more because it had an interesting concept. There was a lot of beers on tap and you, they just give you a wristband and that's your tab and you just pour as much as you want and it like calculates and sends the bill to your wristband. Yeah, you could drink an ounce, just like an ounce and just just to try different beers because they have so many and some wine. And I don't like any of them. That's the funniest part, I think. Yeah. I, I <laughs> and another funny part was that they made guacamole and yeah. it was like a show, like a gimmick. I guess you order the guacamole and they make it in front of you. And you could tell that the lady was just like, oh, another person ordering guacamole. It reminded me of that clip from The Simpsons. <laughs> Here you go, here I am, Uncle Mo! Thank you, ma'am. This'll be a treat. Uncle Mo, here I am, while you eat. Yay! Now do it for Terry. What, it's your birthday too? We're twins. 
Here you go, here I am, eat your fries, eat them. Okay, so let's pause it right here. We'd like to welcome you to a new little segment called This is Why We Can't Have Nice Things. And Rafael, take it away. Yeah, so this whole area was just filled with trash. And, and I don't know if like the Koreans are cool with it, but I'm pretty sure, like in my mind, I just picture all the Westerners doing it because nowhere else is dirty. And then right here, you're getting a mixture of Westerners and locals. And then I went back to the same spot here the following night. I went with some Canadian girls and these girls were, when we finished with the club and drinking, we went out and she took out her last cigarette and just threw the, the the packaging on the floor. And I'm like, like really? Like you just threw your, your cigarette pack on the floor? I'm like, like carry it, throw it away later or something. But mm -hmm. she, like boom, like she just, what do you do with that? And I'm like, and I was grossed out. Like these women like, ugh. Like I was just like, I just picture her pissing, standing up and you know, doing, I don't know, I don't know. And I don't think she was a good Canadian if she's doing that. I heard Canada's really clean, so. Yeah, yeah I, I know you Canadians. I know you guys are clean. And uh, that's Seoul Tower. And uh, that was the view from this little rooftop bar we ended up at. Yeah, there wasn't much going on there because it was already pretty much closed by that time. It closed early. Uh, but I mean, I understand why, because uh, the subway stopped running at, at midnight. So this part was crazy. There was this guy going nuts far away and he was like dropping cones and I think he even fell at one point and I just took out my camera to record him and I'm telling everybody, guys, pay attention, pay attention. You guys, watch this guy, watch this guy, be careful, look at him. And then- Yeah, that's where I tapped Song and I'm like, hey, watch out, there's this crazy guy behind you. And then like everything about him just didn't, you know, like, cause normally they're so respectful and, and all that, they have all that stuff and this guy's going way off of the, you know, the standard that he scares me even more. Mm -hmm. And here in LA, if you saw that in the streets, you're like, ah, fucking crazy. Just, like, just, just walk, walk, walk around him. And as I was saying, since the subway's closed around midnight, it gets pretty competitive to find a taxi back home at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> the taxis only go to specific locations, and you have to know that. You have to read the top, and it'll say the city or the district or whatever, whatever they got over there. And then you have to know that, but obviously you can't read their language as a Westerner, so you're screwed, and then you try to talk to them. They don't know English. Like they're probably the only group of people that don't know English. Yeah, that's true. For a lot of the taxi drivers, I just have to like show them the address on my phone, and then they take it and they'd be like, "Okay, oh uh, yeah," or "No," and I'm like, "Okay." And like that first one, they were telling me no. I was like, "This guy's an asshole. Why is he?" He just said no. He just saw the address. He was like, "No, I'm not taking you there." Yeah. So I, I didn't get it. We don't understand. Yeah. You had a story about- Yeah, I went out one night without Armando and I met a friend of a friend. Never met these people before, uh, but great people. Well, the guy was really cool. And then he ended up going home because he wanted to catch the train. He's like, oh, I need to go home. I need to catch a train. And, and I'm like, well, how am I gonna get home? And I'm like, can you guys help me get a taxi? I asked those, you know, the Canadian women, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get you a taxi. I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Party till like 3, 3 a.m. And then I'm tired. I'm like, all right, let's get out of here. Let's, let's go. And we're leaving. And then, you know, this is where she throws a cigarette pack on the floor. And then I'm like, let's go, let's go. And they didn't do anything. They just stood there drunk for like three hours, two hours. And I was losing my mind. I wanted to go home. And I was like debating about going off and trying to find a taxi by myself. And I'm like, I don't even know where I would begin because I don't know the proper location for taxis. My phone was dead, so I couldn't even use the maps and try to figure out where I was. I was just completely screwed. And then I waited till the Metro because I separated from these people. I just left these Canadian people. And I went to the train and uh, it was locked. And then there's like all these Westerners, all these Westerners and there's, there's mixed Koreans. And then they opened up the gates and then all the Westerners start screaming. Rah! Like like football, you know, jocks. Like, like it's like a movie. Like oh my gosh, but it was funny. And then I got excited because you know I'm finally gonna go on the dang train to go home. Nope, I wait around for like thirty minutes or forty minutes for a train to get there. It was miserable. So go home at midnight. Don't don't even bother. All right. So for our last day in Seoul, 
we decided to try something that was kind of uniquely Korean. I don't know if you can do this like in LA, uh, but we went to this uh, fish market called Noryang Jin Wholesale Fish Market. Oh, fuck. Are you getting that? <laughs> he picked a fish out of the little tank and he just threw it on the floor and whacked it on the head with a stick and then stabbed it and threw it on the cutting board right there. So that was pretty pretty crazy. I felt bad for that fish. <laughs> At least it's dead now. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't keep it alive for that <laughs> Wow. Am I gonna eat you, little critter? Alright, this is the main reason why we came was because I wanted to try eating live uh, octopus, which is not something that I think we can do in LA. And it's not really live actually because- I think you can do this in LA. You can? I think so. I don't think so. I don't know. I we'll think see. the same way. Comment down below if you know a place in LA that will serve you live octopus. Even though it's not really live, what happens is they kill it, but there are still reflexes in the tentacles and they keep moving around. And then this is Armando's favorite dish. <laughs> the elephant trunk fish. Oh my gosh, it, it looks like uh, it's, uh, it's un called... uncircumcised penis. Just the way you like it. Yeah. <laughs> Foreskin still intact. Oh, that's creepy. These things are weird. Like I, I asked if they were alive because I'm like, I mean, I know it's it's some, it's moving, but I'm like, is it a, like, I don't know. Like, is it like, does it have a brain? That's what I'm, what I'm trying to get at. It's got a head, that's for sure. <laughs> And if you do want to buy your share of penis fishes, that's their actual name, yeah. penis fish. It's not like he's making this up, it's penis fish. They can actually take it upstairs for you because there's a restaurant on the top floor that'll prepare it for you and you can eat your penis fish on the spot. Uh, we ended up just going with a live octopus. All right, here it is guys. It's kind of dangerous because sometimes the suction cups can get stuck to your throat and you can suffocate and die. It's crawling it's out, escape, that one's gonna escape. <laughs> so, oh shoot, look, you can see the tentacles trying to, the tentacles are sticking, dude. Look at this shit. Yeah, you gotta work on your chopstick skills, man. <laughs> As you can see, it's moving, right? So my only fear is the suction, suction cup getting stuck in my throat. So I gotta make sure I chew it thoroughly. <laughs> I can feel it trying to stick to my cheek. I think. Yeah. Oh shit, it, it is strong. Shit. The sesame oil. Alright, so I'm gonna grab one that's sleeping so I can wake it up. Are you ready? Yeah. No! Oh, they're fighting now. Alright. Can you feel it? You can't feel it moving? I didn't give it a chance. Well, you're supposed to make sure you chew it. Wait, you started chewing? Yeah. Oh. I killed it good. <laughs> All right, time for so soju. Oh, I don't know you do that. That's the authentic way of drinking soju. Oh, my suction cup's stuck on my, my cheek. Got it. That's a little suction cup and it was stuck to my cheek. Would you eat the octopus again? Um, uh, no, I tried it once. It wasn't that great. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't great. You wasted that entire dish. I want people to know that. The main reason why I didn't want more, first of all, it wasn't that great. Like I said, I wouldn't try it again. Uh, second of all, uh, I get heartburn and I constantly feel like I have a hard time keeping food down. And on top of that, I was scared because of what I mentioned about the tentacles getting stuck to people's throats. So I was like, how many times do I want to risk it? I already tried a piece. How many more pieces do I need to try to get the full experience? I don't know. Why did you want to eat live octopus? To get the experience. But no, there's a reason why. 
a to movie. movie to market. Oh, yeah. Oh no, I guess sort of in the movie Old Boy Korean movie, which is actually my favorite movie. Uh, he eats a live octopus, but it's not the same. This one was killed. And right, it was just the illusion of being live. But I you wanted, wanted that. Yeah, but that was before I had heartburn. Oh my okay. god. And then they should sell little tiny octopuses, right? That's alive and you can just chew on that thing. Similar, no? Well, that concludes our trip to Seoul. If you haven't already seen it, check out part one and go ahead and subscribe. <coughs> you know, a cough is more associated with being sick, right? I'm not sick. Yeah, but a cough is more associated with being sick. Look how he gets. This whole trip he's been like that. Just your cough. It's germaphobe right yeah, here. Like, relax. Fucking thing. And then fucking chill out, man. Show all the cops. I'm not gonna get you sick, bed. dude. The trip's over. I would have got you sick by now. Let's see what I gotta deal with. <laughs>